television presenter Sinead Kennedy is walking the Loganmoor Loop in the Ox Mountains, County Mayo. And from a weather point of view, Sinead has had four seasons in one day. It's getting kind of heavy now, so I think I need to find myself a bit of shelter. Sinead is now taking a detour to visit Tom Hennigan's Heritage Museum in Kilasser. Right, Sue? So. That's all right, come there. Tell me a little bit about um, Hennigan Heritage. What is it that you guys actually do here? Well, Hennigan's Heritage for me is uh, showcasing a way of life along the west coast of Ireland. I realised in 1990, with the demands now coming from Europe, I no longer had a future farming 10 acres of land. So in 1990s then I decided that I would diversify into agritourism. So I've developed it to tell the story of the people of this region and there I showcase all of the trades and, and traditions of the region. For yourself then, what was it like actually growing up here in this house? <laughs> this particular house was built in the 1870s. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm the sixth generation as I said here. I lived here in this house till 1970. For me it was just a way of life and that was it. There were six of us here in the house, as I said, as kids. And there was, if there was anything different about our way of life here, it was the fact that um, our dads were migrant labourers. And there was 24 kids here between three houses, 150 yards apart. And none of great us had... crack, so? Yes, of course. Of course, great crack. Now, for all the walking right that I've been doing um, today, it would give you a great appreciation for the amount of walking that was done back in the day, you know, no cars, transport like that. For me, growing up here, walking was a way of life. We didn't have bicycles, so walking you had to do. We wouldn't go out the day or go out the fields in, in bad shoes. Now I often see people coming walking with trainers on them and white runners. Wow, I'd say, what planet is these coming? What circus is this fella joining? You know, absolutely crazy stuff. If you're coming to Mayo, don't come for the sunshine. Come for the weather, dress yourself, and we'll take you around. <laughs> That's so true. Don't come for the weather. We didn't, thank God. Uh, then there's stuff from the landlord's house, uh, the famine pot. This region lost 40% of its people during that episode of starvation. Traded our abilities with one another and our commodities because none of us had money. The cobbler shop itself, when he died, his nephew gave me the collection. And there'd be, st be stuff there in that cobbler shop from the turn of the 20th century. It was recently counted the pieces that are in, I think there's something like 760 pieces. Right, all of a shoemaker's outfit. So I think it's posterity saved. Now, we'll go back here to the hobnail boot. If and when the sole broke down and you did not have the money to replace it, mm -hmm. well, at least you saved the upper. Okay. And there was an expression that went with life when that happened to you, when a hole came on the sole of your shoe. You're down in your uppers. You right can't on. go any lower, right? Yeah. So now, the next time a hole comes in your shoe, think of your tool, Tremeo, you're down in your uppers. Okay. okay? So you saved the upper, because down the road from us here, then at Charlestown, was a factory that made clogs. Okay. And here we see that. 1970s fur-lined uppers, built onto a timber sole. They're very chunky, though, to be walking around the place, and you know. Who would be watching you in the mountain? You're going through mountains. Are they not awkward to walk in the That's mountains? Like, they're you ridiculous. You learn how to walk them. You Watch the weight. They're about two stone weight. That's ridiculous. What about if you step in a, in a thorn bush or a lump of wire? Or a... Hey, look, we're you not walking around in them now. And we're all right, aren't we? Those were called clogs. And they're like Uggs on the inside. Hmm? They're like Uggs on the inside. Well, whatever you call them yourself. <laughs> I don't Those know. It's like the... a workout in itself, Tom. I just know. I wouldn't... There's a difference between being tuned into the Irish landscape and coming out and looking at it. <laughs> sure, that's These what I'm here reality. to find out. Will you stop? Right. OK, Tom, I better go back out walking. I won't be using them anyway, that's for sure. Come on. <laughs> Both my parents are actually from Tipperary. And I have to say, Tom's house really reminds me of my maternal grandmother's. Maybe it's, you know, the style of the house, or, or maybe it's just the simple way of life. Mm. 
I've grown up in Cork, so kind of in the city, spending a lot of my youth on farmland and Tipperary, and, and it's nice to be out in the open again, out in the wild. <laughs> At this part of the Log and Moor Loop, Sinead is walking Boreens, which were home to some famous Mayo folk and historical heroes. She hopes to find out more from Noel Gillard and local writer Stephen Dunford from nearby Killala. Right, will do. So this is a very historic area. Mm -hmm. Huge associations with 1798 and General Humbert's campaign. How did it all start? We invited the French to come here. We had the French Revolution and then the French offered help to any nation that was oppressed. So we took up that offer and the United Irish men went to the French and invited them over to Ireland. And the French had a back door into England, you know? And it's 1798 became Blee and the Francoc, the year of the French. Okay, and how many actually landed? 1,019, that includes two women. T two women and 1,017 French lads. Don't eat, we won't yeah. even get into that no, side we won't, of things no, we won't. now. So General Humbert was in charge of, of this force and uh, he had a huge victory in Castle Barlow. So did the French soldiers then actually walk these mountains? Absolutely, out? absolutely. They would have come from, you know, Killala and Ballina and Foxford and come over these mountains on the way to a victory in Tubbercurry and another victory in Colooney and then defeat and slaughter in Ballinamuck in, in Longford. Not a very nice end for some of them. Sinead finally sees some wild Irish goats. Look at that. There's 30 of them, Sinead. Would Look. you see them often around here? Not to that extent, no. There's no. Of them. Oh, I got such a surprise when I saw the goats, and there were so many of them. It was great, yeah, because I didn't think we would. Stephen tells Sinead another interesting story about the lost treasure of a notorious highwayman, Captain Gallagher, who roamed and hid in boreens like these when on the run from the Redcoats in the 1800s and went around this area for years and was a sort of a, as I say, an outlaw robbing the rich and giving to the poor. But there's a great story told about him. He was hanged in Foxford, where you were, on the Fair Green in Foxford. Oh, right, and okay. when they were hanging him, he made a deal. He was trying to get off, obviously, you know, with a rope around your neck. And he told them that he would uh, tell them where his treasure was hid, or hidden, even, mm -hmm. if they'd let him go, but it didn't, uh, didn't work. But for weeks after the hanging, this area was being scoured by the locals looking for treasure. So do they still believe that Gallagher's treasure is hidden in Absolutely. these mountains somewhere? Why do you think I'm walking up here? Sinead has now reached the point where the loop walk Gallagher's meets the main treasure. Foxford to yeah, Ballinar Road. In, uh... we'll see you next year for in Humbert's footsteps. And we'll You'll never see me this. again if I find the treasure. Sinead now faces the most challenging part of the walk the off-road ascent to the other side of Logan Moor to the mountain road where she started her loop walk earlier today. I was well warned that this was the part of the walk that was going to be a bit of a challenge. But you know what? I'm up for it. When the rain fades off in the Ox Mountains, the winds fall easy. The clouds part, and the streams of light appear over the heather-clad uplands. to stop, live in the moment, take it all in, and just enjoy it. Thank you. 
What an incredible day and what an absolutely epic view the way the clouds parted just to kind of let us have a sneak peek at that sunset. It was amazing. The landscape that I came across today was absolutely stunning. Yeah, it was exposed and, you know, you weren't hidden from any of the elements. Jean was great for information. Like, I didn't realise that what we were looking at was essentially an old glacier. That wouldn't have occurred to me if I just drove down the road and passed that mountain, you know, in the car and never set foot outside. Tom told me a load of stories, you know, about what life was like back in the day in Mayo and that was interesting. Oh, I got such a surprise when I saw the goats and there were so many of them and they were such an array of colours and they were wild. I think that was the most exciting thing, that you know that they're wild goats. Oh, the view at sunset, well, when the clouds parted, yeah, it was just magic to be able to see that. After all the walking and all the effort, you just want to be able to take in that vista and it was just stunning. I've just really, really enjoyed myself and I have to admit that today's made me realise that sometimes we take for granted what's right under our nose and this country we inhabit, it's a bit of a gem and yeah, I've a lot left to be discovered in Ireland and I'm gonna make a bit more time and effort to do that now, I think.